Wow, what a disappointing weekend for us Arsenal fans. I mean, couldn't have been worse. 2-0 loss to Bournemouth. Never saw that coming. On top of that, Saliba is not playing. It's not going to be available against Liverpool. Yeah, kind of worries me a little bit, uh, especially with the form they have, the clutch players uh, in the in the forward line they have, and yeah, everything that's that's that they have going for them. We lost two 0 to Bournemouth fair and square. I think most of it was our own doing. I do believe that if it was a red card, it is a red card. Our uh, last man. I don't know what Saliba was doing. I think a lot of people are talking about PGM could have been tucked to a, a yellow, which was the on-field decision. I don't know why they went to review it again. But let's not talk about that. But let's talk about what Arsenal are doing this season, and a few things that that actually worry me about. Uh, our team this season and uh, none of this that I'm going to say is puts me in our data outboard. I am not our data out. I don't think even if our data or Arsenal finish fourth or outside of top four, our data should be out. I think our data is a long term manager back into the core. But that doesn't mean that we can't even uh, criticize our teams or, you know, when we see something that we don't like. Uh, we criticism can be healthy. And I really hope that this is, is come across as a healthy criticism. Uh, so, the last two weekends, we played Southampton and we played Bournemouth. Southampton are 19 in the table, Bournemouth are 11th. So, one is basically a relegation for the team. One is uh, a bottom of the table team who are uh, doing well. But, you know, we should be beating them. Let's be, let's be honest here. Against Southampton, and this is where my criticism starts from. I literally have been saying it since last weekend. Against a team who are prime releg- relegation fodder, do we need to play 6 or 7 or eight defensive players out of 11. Against Bournemouth, who we should be beating, who we should be having enough quality to beat, should we be playing a midfield of Thomas Partey, Mikel Marino, and, and, and Declan Rice, and only have three attacking, um, attack-minded players? Because both, all three of them are arguably, like two of them are CDMs, and none of them we haven't really seen. So we hope it's he's a progressive LCM who can pass and do stuff, but he's not Odegaard. He's not like the intricate passer. So it's a very conservative uh, lineup, and uh, it's, it's a very pragmatic approach of playing a team who we should be beating on any given day because we are the Oscar and we are competing for the league. If we are doing that, we are focusing and depending so much on uh, finishing the very few chances that we get. It's not fair to expect from our attackers to finish those chances because if this was the route that you're going to take, then we just need clutch finishers. Then I would go forward and argue that we had, we, we messed up our summer business to some extent because if this was the thought process and this was the style that we were going to implement this season, then we need killers up top. And no matter how good Havertz is, how good uh, Martinelli is or was uh, a couple of seasons ago and then he's you know hopefully he's building his form up back to the same level again they're not like killers they're not like Haaland's of the world who would finish like four out of five chances or like nine out of ten chances I would say Haaland like Haaland goes on to the goal you know he's gonna finish. like if he doesn't finish it then it doesn't even become a headline because that is such n- not a big thing if nobody talks about it and he'll finish the next chance or maybe next ten chances out of like you know ten so if we are to be a team who needs those two or three chances to be converted then we need those players who who have like you know high percentage conversion rate Havertz doesn't have that Martinelli doesn't have that Sterling absolutely not and he does I mean his finishing the less said the better so if we are if if we are going down that route we can't really depend on Saka to do all the attacking work and also the defensive work on the right side and then expect him to be available for like 60 games in the season so then there has to be some question marks around the summer business but overarchingly do we need such pragmatic tactics I know we've been down 10 men for like three out of five games and all of those games up, up until the Bournemouth game were played absolutely to the team. Like I would expect us to be defensive against Brighton after going 1-0 down because it was such a surprise. And what people don't realize is the shock of the red card, right? Sometimes, like with Saliba, everybody in the team saw that, everybody in the team kind of knew that he might get sent off for that. So, something like Declan, he was a no-brainer. Like, it, it will never, I mean, mark my words, it will never be given a yellow card. No other team in the in the league for the rest of the 20 or whatever game week, 30 game weeks uh, left, will get a second yellow for kicking the ball away. It just happens with Arsenal. And funny enough, it happened twice. With Trossard, same thing. The, the shock of getting such a silly yellow, second yellow, which would never be given otherwise, kind of puts the team against us versus them mentality but my question is after going those after experiencing whatever we are experiencing with PGMOL why are we so defensive like do you do you actually Arsenal fans expect Liverpool or Manchester City to play the way we played against Bournemouth and I don't expect them I expect them to be you know punchy I expect them to be uh, going out there and playing their game and even if they are 10 against 11 I expect their quality to shine 
Whereas for us, we are expecting one or two chances that we create to be converted. And yes, Martinelli's was the best chance, but that was the only, also the only chance. So like it wasn't like he, he missed five or six chances. He just missed one. Like we didn't create a second or a third chance for him. So if you're not doing that, then how can we expect our attackers to flourish in a system which creates so little chances? So I think a lot of it is solved by Odegaard. So I'm not saying that we do, we lack the facilities to implement a free-flowing football, but while we don't have him, I think we should be a little bit more forward foot on the on the forward foot and play one area maybe. Like whenever he comes on, he's parky. You know what he wants to do. He, he represents the team. He is a creative and things happen when he's on the pitch. So might as well throw him. Let's see what he can cook. I mean, we anyways are not doing great, so let's let's try try uh, try him in the games where we think like you know we won't face tough oppositions where we expect to have the ball because I don't expect him to play against Liverpool. I mean, I'm totally on board of playing the line if we played against Bournemouth to be playing against Liverpool. That's fine. That works. That's horses for courses. But if that becomes your style, then I think it becomes a little bit more of a question in my head that whether we do have the players up front to implement that style. That's that's my chain of thought right now. Let me know what you guys think and you know maybe I'm I'm right I'm wrong 